Okay, I'm um, calling the calling to order the meeting of the Greensburg Transit Commission. Um, we are meeting immediately following the <coughs> meeting of the Zoning Appeals Board, so we're delayed in our start time from 7.30, it's now 8.15. Um, I would ask that you do silence any electronic media just uh, to avoid interruption. And uh, please stand with me. And by the way, we're meeting in council chambers for the record uh, because of the larger crowd earlier and rather than in our regular meeting spot. And that was really noted on the signage outside. So let us begin with the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. To the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Nancy, would you call the roll, please? Uh, Blake? Here. John? Here. Roy? Here. Kevin? Here. Bruce? Here. Glenn? Here. Tom? He is absent. Um, minutes, uh, the agenda says September 18th, but actually it's October 16th minutes and the October 29th minutes. I uh, would uh, look at the first one first, October 16th minutes were sent to you via email. Also, um, you have a copy in front of you. Are there any corrections or additions? Hearing none, I would state the are approved as submitted. Any objection? Looking at then the October 29th minutes, um, special plan commission meeting, um, and minutes have been sent to you and are in front of you. Are there corrections or additions for the minutes submitted for October 29th special meeting? Hearing none, they stand approved as submitted. Uh, we have uh, just a couple of items of business tonight. Uh, the first uh, item is a rezoning request from Menards uh, from an I-1 to a B-3 zoning. Uh, and I believe um, Representative from Menards is here. Colin Armstrong with Menards Incorporated, Montclair, Wisconsin. Welcome. Thank you. Um, we are requesting a rezone of the property um, which we, in which we are under contract to purchase uh, for a future Menards store. The property right now is currently uh, zoned I-1 light industrial in, in which we uh, are requesting they recommend to council to rezone the property to a B3 heavy commercial. Um, within the ordinance code, it, it describes B3 heavy commercial as specifically lumber sales, which is our main business, along with hardware and several other departments within the store. Uh, it only makes sense in, in, in what we've uh, seen in the ordinance code and then in relation to what the store is. Um, I also looked at the comp plan for the city of Greensburg and it falls in line with uh, what the comp plan describes for that area uh, of Greensburg. Um. Questions by members of the plan commission? Um, the zoning, I think, uh, the to the west of it is um, B3 also. Uh, the Walmart is, is a B3 zoned area. <coughs> Making it B3 actually uh, fits the design of the area even better than I-1. I think I-1 initially was there just kind of bringing it around from the other, but um, so um, thank you. And no questions. Are there members of the public that wish to comment upon this request? I, I as the owner, come up and state your name, please. My name is Rick Michalowski. I'm the owner of the property, and I request that we grant that because it's best suited. Thank you. 
Um, if we're changing this too, you might note that we, as the site uh, shows, um, zoning at this um, allows for other development in those two outlots in the front to be used, um, but it wouldn't have to be used for B3. Anything under a B2 is eligible to be inside a B3 as well. So other um, smaller retail, so to speak, or like uh, establishments are able to be used, uh, established in this area as well. Okay, um, questions, comments? Everybody clear on what we're doing? Comfortable? I would entertain a motion for approval or not for this request. I make a motion that we approve the recent request. Moved by Roy. Is there a second? Second, second by Blake. Uh, I will call the question. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Same sign. Okay. Uh, it's done. That one's done. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, the second item we have here is the sign orange discussion review. And I, I um, this morning, <laughs> I received a call. Are you going to be going through that tonight? And I, I said, well, sure, why not? We only got one item on our agenda not realizing what was actually preceding it. Um, so uh, I do want to continue with that discussion, um, and we will do it for a period of 30, 40 minutes or so. I will not keep you here all evening. Um, and my intent was that we would get this pretty well knocked out tonight, that we could bring back a full, complete copy for December consideration. And that's still my hope. Um, We'll see how far we get, though. Also this morning, Sean asked, uh, he had um, done some study and some put together some information. Want to know if he could send it out. I did uh, invite him to do that. So you received some of that information uh, in your email. I don't know if you had a chance to look at it carefully or not. But uh, as I recall, where we left off in our um, discussion of the and review of the sign ordinance was with the area dealing with um, historic the downtown or central business district B1 basically the, the and which includes the uh, historic preservation area um, and I think I would again it's not, these pages of this draft are not numbered, unfortunately. But if you, um, it's coming from the back, it's about six pages in. And it's downtown and light commercial is what the heading says on the, on the original draft that we had. Uh, the pieces that Sean sent us um, included the historic area rules from the historic uh, preservation district. And then uh, a couple of, of um, documents illustrating different signs and um, information. So um, with that, I think what I'd like to do first, Sean, is ask you to take a few minutes to um, give us your salient points and reasons what you want us to, to take note of with this that you sent us, okay? If you do that, please come up to the podium, please. Um, and that way we can keep this in mind as we begin to go through the test. All right? Okay. Sean Green, uh, 1045 East Freeland Road, Greensburg. Uh, it, it was interesting, you know, we've all talked about this, but until you really go out and you do some measurements of storefronts and, and signage, uh, it's all over the place um, and first of all on looking at the historical area rules off their website it, it hit on some key issues um, one thing that was concerning to me uh, was on their the second page of the highlighted notes uh, 
uh, halfway on the page pertain only if property owner is making a significant change in the facade of the building, building a new building or demolishing an existing building. The guidelines do not cover normal maintenance of buildings nor guidelines cover any building in the district that is zoned residential. I just have a little bit of concerns on how much authority this gives the historical area on signage the way it's laid out. I think it needs to be tightened up a little bit and or we need to know who's going to trump who as far as uh, Gary having letting doing the paperwork through the city or if it goes through the historical again I think we want to make it easy on businesses and, and simple to understand um, my take on it would be for Gary to, to have a good template to go on <coughs> and for the historical society to back that and it'd be great if anybody's here with the well it doesn't look like any historical people or, or downtown people but um, on the Next page uh, that has uh, a picture off the website of um, Main Street Greensburg. Um, like I mentioned to Glenn, spent uh, a lot of time measuring, walking around, studying, and also met with Brian Robbins, which is a great asset for Main Street. Has a lot of passion and, and care about the city as well. Um, and as you can view on these old photos, you know, signage is part of the history. And a lot of it used to be dimensional. You can see the Meniers uh, in, in the 1930s to 1950s photo. Um, and Brian and I both agreed that I think the number one issue that, that we see would be nice to be straightened out and for people to have better guidelines is, is taste, which is hard to put. Uh, rules on that, but also proportional signage uh, to that will go with the buildings. Um, and you know, want to promote from what I understand and I believe in it too is the downtown needs to be unique and different, and it needs to promote small business, not uh, the big box stores. Even though I don't have anything against them, we do a lot of work with them, but it doesn't make a downtown prosper. It doesn't make it unique for people to visit it and talk about it and promote it to be different. So a challenge for the smaller storefronts is if you do a square foot, linear foot of your building, you times it by one and a half or two or three, and that allows you square foot of signage. I feel that those are the, the smaller buildings are the ones we really need to pay attention to and give them a little more signage as long as it's proportional. And as long as it's in the historical area, and the third item, as long as it's um, a two-story or larger building, so you could have more vertical signs. And you see these a lot, even in uh, downtown Indianapolis, where they're redoing areas of historical significance, of uh, doing blade signs and, and tasteful signs that still proportionally go well with it. So I think it's just going to be a little tricky to come up with a good rule to follow for this area. It's a pretty sensitive item in my, my mind. And last, I <clears throat> did come up with on the, the page, it has, has the images circled, and it, uh, it's up in the right hand corner, says existing signs, and then it gives uh, square feet of the signs. On page one, you'll see main source bank and also crafts and occasions. Went out ahead and did a, a rough measurement of the storefront, like a typical uh, commercial building, or if you're on Lincoln Street, you come in, you say your building's, you know, 49 feet wide, you times it by 1.5 or whatever, and that gives you your square feet of what you're allowed for your signage. Um, what we're seeing on the, the larger storefront buildings, like these two, main source, approximately a 100 foot wide on that one side. Um, crafts and occasions, approximately 49 foot wide. And if you do the percentages, you know, they're 10% um, for main source, uh, a 1.3 for, for crafts and occasions. We flip the page. We have a wall sign for the curio shop. It's only uh, approximately 16 foot wide storefront. And they have uh, 5%. Um, total 80 square feet. In my opinion, that's 
tad large for that, that location. Um, the next item is a V-styled sign for Meniere's and the square feet on that is 96 square and by a 58 foot wide storefront. That calculates to 1.66, a little over one and a half uh, for that but they have a 58 foot wide storefront. Again, that sign as a historical person viewing that sign and the TAF sign, people that are in historical signs would love to have those in a museum or whatever. And, and personally, I think those signs were needed back in the day when you had a horse and buggy and you needed to see for a long distance and you didn't have anything else around. But they're, you know, for a new business coming out, I feel they're a little excessive. Uh, the next item is uh, we're building is Swimmer Wholesale. It's just a flat sign, pretty inexpensive sign, no dimension to it or anything of historical value. It is a cutout shape, so it adds some uh, niceness to it. It's 40 foot wide, uh, 80 square feet. That's uh, so you times that by two uh, to get that square feet. The next page, which is what I was talking about earlier, it's think should be on our minds more than anything, especially if some of these large stores like Meniere's are closed down and decide to break their shop up into smaller uh, spots for more unique non-big box stores that will add value to our historical area and our shopping. Uh, the carriage on the square, it's only 32 square feet. It is a nice sign. It's dimensional. It's cut out. Personally, it, it's installed too high for it to be uh, as viewable as it should be, but um, it's uh, approximately 24 foot wide storefront, uh, so that would be times uh, 1.35 to come up with 32 square feet. Next item is Gina Company, 18 foot wide storefront, um, 42 square feet, so it would be a divide those, it's a 2.3 equation, and so on and so forth. What I come to figure throughout this is recommend a calculation that would, if, if it would be legal to do, a calculation that would allow the smaller storefronts, let's say 26 a linear foot wide, as long as it was a two to three story building, more square footage with, of course, a maximum. 26 feet or, or less, you're saying? Yes. <clears throat> What I measured, I only measured on the west side, uh, on the storefronts, and half of the south side. And there was uh, 16s, a lot of 16s, a lot of 18s, 24s, uh, white storefronts. And put them in a separate category. Other than that, I think uh, the rules and regs that we have would be sufficient uh, that we came up with so far. Um, another item of concern would be uh, older storefronts that have uh, no setback. Um, and again, if they were a taller building, not a new one-story building, be you know granted a, a flag mount sign, which basically is similar to Meniere's and Taft furniture. And if you look at the old photos. Uh, you have a magnifying glass, you can see a lot of flag mount signs back in the, the glory days of when there was a lot of people downtown. Um, again, only allowing that uh, if it's a, a older historical building, there's multiple levels, so proportionally it's going to fit well, and they don't have room for a, a monument sign out front. A few examples of businesses that set off um, off the road of ways would be Freddie Plankton and Mac and Seal. They have a nice little monument sign out front, and I feel it's tasteful and it's in a historical area. I didn't hear where you said it was. Reddick, Blankman, Mac and Oh, well, yeah. it's not yeah. Mac anymore. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. The uh, county uh, line across from the old Y. <coughs> right. Um, also, a Lambert Abstract, uh, mm -hmm. when they built that new building, set off and they put a nice little monument out. And I feel those were tasteful for our right. area as well. Um, feel better to put a little more thought into the calculations on a separate chart. I'm sorry I don't have that ready. That's okay. <coughs> um, 
I really appreciate you taking the time you have um, to bring this to our attention because it is a unique um, area with special problems and opportunities. I don't mean problem in the sense that it's a bad thing, but um, just more of a challenge. Um, okay, thanks, John. That was, that is helpful. I guess one question that you brought uh, that um, so to council here, um, we are free to set a separate uh, regulations or expectations or categories within the different signing within the different areas we can have separate standards, correct? Yeah, I believe that, that <coughs> you want to have uh, a, rationale. a reasonable rationale as to why you would have different standards, right. but so long as legislatively you set that out and you and it pass and goes to the council, it's, it's, it's deemed to be legitimate. Okay. Um, I, I jumped in quickly. Um, any of you have questions of Sean for what he presented uh, that you want to clarify or in the amplify on? Could I ask From the audience, question? yes, ma'am, come forward. Um, Jean Johannigman, and I just want to express something that was expressed to me by a mother, another merchant downtown. Please consider the back door signage as well. Um, and I know that the fire department asks you to put, you know, an address on the back, but I think signage also helps in the back for many reasons on those downtown businesses, parking being one of them. And as I understood from one of the um, other merchants, he wanted to put a sign in the back, but I think your, does your current statute not allow that? I don't know. I don't, can't answer that question. Gary's shaking his head, but I don't know if he's shaking it. It doesn't, or it you don't does, know? It does not. It does not allow it. And I would highly suggest that you consider allowing it sure. because a lot of businesses use the back door. Yeah. And I think for the fire department it would be helpful. Sure. Thank, thank you. Okay. Um, all right. Well, with those caveats in mind that we um, need to, or Sean's point is that we really need to take, um, make some considerations for the downtown or at least the historic area in terms of who has the authority, and I think we'll get work through that as we go through. I think more the authority might, your question or your uh, concern about uh, appropriateness or taste, I think that's really where the um, historic preservation people probably have uh, authority, uh, but they would probably have some authority too in terms of just size or whatever. Maybe, and I have to go back, we'll, we'll have to do some thinking about that because I would think that they would have to abide by um, our ordinance, but that's that's a discussion for another time. Right now, let's get staying to the weeds here of this. Um, uh, just, just for clarification, uh, there is a Historic Preservation Commission, um, yeah. and they do in their historic preservation ordinance have a certificate of appropriateness that anybody in the historic preservation area that applies to the planning department, if it meets all the guidelines that are set out in the signage for that, uh, you know, the requirements that are in the historic preservation area. First, we look for size as it relates to the sign ordinance. Then we look at materials and construction as how it relates to that in the historic preservation ordinance. And if it meets the guidelines that are there at the staff level, we will issue a certificate of appropriateness so they can go to the sign. Now, if they want to go beyond that, then we do have the Historic Preservation Commission, which they then like the BZA will come state their case because they're within that historic district. Okay. So, in effect, if we make the exceptions and they stay within those and the, the type of materials and so forth are appropriate for... But I think you'd have two ordinances that you might need to amend and, and Tim may be able to speak to this better because 
you have a separate historic preservation ordinance, which then has its own adopted guidelines. So if you start changing and the sign ordinance that you have there is adopting those. So if you decide to amend I got you. what's in the historic preservation, then you might want to get that commission to talk with them, at least in that district, of how you want to do that. I mean, just, just very simply, if, if we're going to run the risk of having conflicting ordinances, yeah, we don't then, want then we need to address that. And, and it may be that, I mean, ultimately, it's, a, it's planning and council will have to determine um, how they want to reconcile, reconcile the right. two, two conflicts or the if there is a potential conflict. I yeah, I, I, I just think we'll have, that's something we will have to take a look at. Right now, let's go back to <coughs> the actual, what we've got listed here, step by step, looking and see what, whether it's appropriate if we want to make those exceptions in terms of size of buildings and so forth. Let's note it as we go through. Okay. So if, are we all on the same page here? Uh, we're looking now at the draft of the uh, sign ordinance section dealing with downtown and light commercial, which I think needs to be uh, revised to say central business B1, uh, because that, that central business B1 is larger than the historic preservation area itself. <clears throat> okay. Um, and the first sentence, it says, this section applies to, uh, it should be uh, central business or B1 area that is not in the historic district. Um, okay. Site, we've got single tenant buildings. Uh, we got the number of signs here, one. And it allows for all of these things, wall, projecting on a canopy and so forth. Um, per street frontage and or public parking. And one sandwich board sign. Uh, so this is basically outside of the historical. Yes, the um, Next, uh, next section down begins signs in the historical downtown district. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Um, uh, at least that's the way I'm reading it. I don't know if that's that's the way we'll keep it, but I think that's what we're we're looking at now. Okay, because this extends um, beyond the square, beyond the historic preservation specific. Area, central central district goes like south to um, on Broadway covering the warehouse for example that's there on on South Broadway Need 
if you had a tenant, if you if you had a building where you had a tenant on the second floor, you probably want to have some kind of a, a notation to be able to let people know where that location is. And that's really not addressed, as far as I can tell, in the, in the other pieces that we have had. Correct? That's a valid point, yes. It's not addressed on the uh, 30 to 35 mile an hour. It no. Is, it is on the, uh, the faster lanes uh, because we were considering businesses like uh, like a car dealership that has multiple brands they want to put, put a note in up to four wall signs. But you're correct, it's not on And I, and I think what's allowed here, I think, seems to be reasonable for this, this what we're talking about in this downtown area. We're not talking about, you know, we're talking about slower traffic, we hope. Okay, are you comfortable leaving it that way, Roy? Yeah, well, wouldn't you, I mean, to me, it would just make sense to, to refer to it as we have in the other areas. Yeah. The same chart to allow, I mean, the speed limit's the same, People, even I understand if you're on the that. Second floor, you have the same <clears throat> desires to have people know where you are as the person on the first floor. <clears throat> sure. Well, then we could say then, don't distinguish between ground floor and tenant floor. Just one wall, projecting awning, and so forth, um, per per street frontage. Um, I don't know because that's a little different than second floor is different than the first floor. How many businesses have? Not many, that I don't think there's any downtown. At this I'm not a fan of coming in for special meetings, but if it's so low, maybe, maybe they'd have to come in. Most likely if they come into a building and you have two tenants sharing a building, you guys really like to know what's going on anyway, don't you? Especially okay, the let's, at this point then, let's just strike the tenant on the second floor and leave it out at this point. Uh, ask a question. I mean, yeah. As far as like the doghouse and do they operate a the realty office out of the back of that? Yes. So which would be on the, which would be on the second floor, correct? No, no, it's, it's, it's on, on the, the back side. It's, it's on, on the, the back, back side, side of the same yeah. floor. So the There's a ramp, but it's ground floor because it's sort of the okay. property there. Mm -hmm. So you have the signage on the back and then you have signage on the front. Well, we're gonna have to deal with that question in the back. That hasn't come up yet. My question is, is how are they, how's their that, That's how theirs is now. Yes. So they are not within the ordinance as what Well, we got to be, we, we, they, granted. they came before the VZA and we granted them an exception okay. to do that. Which is what we're saying here. By striking it, we're saying, okay, there aren't that many, so have them come to the special meeting. I'm in favor of that. You know, it's. Okay. Okay.